The History of Harnish Lamps, a 10-minute documentary about the making of a company. Born in Copenhagen, Denmark in 1814, George William Frudenlund, the founder of the company, was educated as a plumber, and in 1834 he traveled outside Denmark to practice his profession in other countries. When he returned to Denmark, he set up his own business in 1842, and due to his educational background, he quickly got involved in designing lamps and producing the famous red mailboxes from 1864 that are still being used to this day. Besides making lamps, the company also contributed to work on famous buildings such as Rosenborg Castle, where the crown jewels are kept, the Royal Library, which houses the original handwritten notes of Søren Kierkegaard and H.C. Anderson, and also the Natural History of Science Museum, and many more. The company itself was situated in Lederstræde No. 9 in Inner Copenhagen, but before Fulnlund's death in 1884, he had married and had had three sons and two daughters. Two of his sons also worked in the company, but none of them replaced their father's position. So when George William Fulnlund died, they needed a successor. Johann August Wilhelm Harnisch was to be that person, and he took over the company in 1884 and expanded it enormously. The workshop doubled in size and therefore also in the amount of workers. Mechanical work was introduced and they produced almost every lighthouse in Denmark. Later on in 1896, Fulnlund designed little copper kiosks in the city center of Copenhagen, while also working on different churches and public buildings, such as Holmens Kirke and Korsør railway station. In 1902, the company moved to Nygårdsvej because of the small size and the place in Lederstred. Here, Johan bought a villa just next to the company's building. In 1912, Johan Harnish received a knighthood for his services to Denmark, and his son George Wilhelm Alexander Harnish, who was educated as a coppersmith, followed in his footsteps and was co-owner of the company in 1922. Afterwards, the focus changed to the classic lamps of the 19th century and the further development of interior lighting for ship cabins, train compartments and staterooms, but also places like the Carlsberg Breweries and Amalienborg Palace, which is the house of the Queen and her royal family. But in 1986, Harnish went bankrupt and the sales manager Eric Sandel Sorensen took over most of the tooling for the oil lamps and continued production under the name of E.S. Sorensen. Fortunately, the business was carried on by George's son, Fleming Harnish, long before 1986. We interviewed Fleming to find out what happened to the company after George died and why he immigrated from Denmark to Canada. And my father was the same as his father. Yeah. De ville regne firmaet alene indtil de døde, faktisk. Og ja. far, han, uh, gik, han opgav det nogle år før han døde, men ikke meget. Okay, ja. Nå, jeg kunne ikke vente. Nej. Det var for lang tid, og men jeg var kun... Da jeg var udlært, da jeg var færdig udlært, der var jeg, var jeg, var jeg 19 år. Ja. Jeg havde også kommet hjem med, 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 med Patsy fra Mængner, da den var, var gift. Ja. Så jeg rejste en hel del. Og det var på den tid, hvor, hvor børnene var lige født. Var, var født, født. Ja. Ja, jeg havde mødt nogle, nogle folk i England, som de var fra en, fra en kirke derovre. Og jeg blev interesseret i deres... I, i deres øh, øh, Teologi. Da jeg ikke kunne komme videre i firmaet før far døde, ja. så tænkte jeg, at jeg lige så godt og rejse herover. Mm. Og det var grunden til, at jeg flyttede. Okay. Jeg, jeg satte op firmaet herover. Ja. Det var ikke connected til, til, min, til min fars firma. Okay. 
Det er min fars firma. Så det var et Alle andet? samme navn. Det var navnet, jeg ønskede at føre videre. Okay. Hvis jeg havde haft den samme chef på det institut, hvor jeg arbejdede som kontroller i Toronto, så ville jeg aldrig have begyndt at lave firma. Det var så til godt firma. Lønnen var fantastisk, og alt ja. var godt. De fire andre direktører på instituttet, de sagde, bare sagde til mig, well, du har ikke, du har ikke en, 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 en accounting degree, så uh, du bliver her så længe du kan. Mm. En dag er han gået, uh, en smider ud. Ja. Så der var så reason why I, uh, I decided when they paid me a severance pay, that I would spend the money to set up the firma over, over here. Yes. Og i midten af 80'erne, der var en arkitekt, der kom ind mm. og spurgte mig, om, øh, om jeg kunne lave. Han gav mig en tegning. Han kan du lave det? Ja, det kan jeg da godt. Ja. Og så sagde han, så sagde han, han viste mig nogle billeder og nogle gadelamper. Så kan du lave det? Ja, det kan jeg da godt. <laughs> det eneste, jeg behøver, er sådan en tegning. Mm. Jeg behøver ikke noget andet. Nej. Og for tegningen... Så længe de får dimensioner på, ja. og hvor mange tommer det er. Præcis, ja. Ja, okay, så vil jeg lave det der, det er ligegyldigt på hvem, hvordan de ser ud. Ja. Da Peter kom for, 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 og begyndte at arbejde for mig, ja, efter et par år, så begyndte jeg at regne. Begyndte, han kunne regne fire med lige så godt. Ja. So, Fleming's two sons, Peter and Tom, took over the business and are now the newest generation. But how has that affected the way the company works today? And what are their plans for the future? We paid a visit to their workshop in Toronto, Ontario, to find out. A lot of this stuff, uh, you know, we got, my dad got called for when he was, uh, you know, when we were, uh, one of the stores that were bringing in product from England. Yeah. It, it, uh, it's a sellable item. So at any rate, it's the same store that's been buying those. We polish the inside up. Yeah. You know, for for a lighting company. Yeah. And then they we polish them, and then they go to a, a player. Yeah. Or anodizer, who puts yeah. a chrome anodize inside, yeah. Okay, so they put it into yeah. a bath and... And then it gets wired into a lamp. Yeah. yeah. Okay. These, these people come to us because we can do a varied, you know, a wide variety of things. So we do machining, we do forming, we do finishing. What they can't do. If you're a designer, you have an idea, you want to be able to go to one place. It's a lot easier to come. To come here, we can set them up. Yeah. We're, we're say we're improving all the time in terms of getting new equipment to do other things. Oh, yeah. You know, we try and create a, a a business where everything's linked together. What we do. So. That's pretty close you know, to what I, they like. Control the color. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like to go retail and market to exclusively to, you know, yeah. um, neighborhoods like Target people. Yeah. And maybe, maybe um, builders and, you know, yeah. uh, designers and whatnot. So, that was the story of my great-great-grandfather Johann Harnisch and his company, 
Harnish Lamps, and how it developed throughout the 20th century, and how it is run now in 2013. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll have to say thanks to a lot of people for helping me out with the history of the company, but especially Tom, Peter and Fleming. I hope the company will live on in a very good spirit. Thank you.